Uh, over the years, the uh, United States does not seem to have moved significantly away from dependence on oil. As governor, would you be in favor of offshore drilling? Well, yes, and I, and I think it's we haven't moved away from our dependence on foreign oil. And the reason for that is we're not drilling our domestic oil resources. We're not going after our domestic oil resources, exploration and production. So I would be in favor of expanding our exploration and production of our own domestic oil resources here in California, whether they be offshore or whether they be onshore, depending, there's, there's, there's pockets of oil onshore too. Most of it is offshore right now, and you can do slant drilling to access that from the coast. The other thing to, to note about these oil platforms is they're teeming with sea life around them. You know, people say it's bad for the environment, but if you, if you look at studies, there's enormous amounts of sea life around the oil platforms. The reason for that is because there's, there are carbon emissions from it. Carbon increases the plankton, which increases the food supply for the fish and the shellfish. So there's a lot of sea life that comes with an oil platform. It's actually beneficial for the, for the species that are around it. So we're, we're given this duplicity by some of these environmental organizations who are in the pockets of foreign interest groups trying to undermine our, our national security, undermine our economy. Uh, would you care to expand on your last sentence? That was an interesting uh, comment that you made. Well, I think a lot of these environmental organizations that put nonsense rules in place are, are funded by foreign interest groups or they're given their ideas by foreign interest groups. You know, the IPCC is a foreign interest group. That's the Global Warming Intergovernmental Plan on Climate Change. Um, that's a foreign interest group. These foreign interests want to make us uncompetitive by driving up our energy usage. And why do they want to do that? So that the jobs get located in their countries, because they know it will create wealth. Uh, for them, and they want to bring us down from within. That's what was found out after that, the first Persian Gulf War. The, the two things that were pretty evident was that the United States couldn't be defeated militarily and that socialism and communism bankrupted countries all around the world. So the, the thing that the foreign interests or the enemies of our country realize is, well, let's bring them down from within. Let's use the environmental laws that they have in place to cripple their economy, to put too many regulations on them, so it's too expensive to do business in the United States, and cause their economy to collapse, and then have the jobs transfer over to us. So then all of these countries have lower corporate tax rates. Mm -hmm. All of these countries have less environmental restrictions. Now, I'm not saying that we want to reduce too many of our environmental restrictions. We don't want pollution going into the atmosphere, but carbon dioxide is fine. You know, China, they have coal plants, and people say, well, look at China. You don't want to be like China. Well, we're not like China, because our coal plants here in the United States only emit carbon dioxide, whereas over there they have sulfur dioxide and all these toxic, noxious emissions. Well, they don't have the pollution control equipment in them that we do. And, you know, greenhouse gases are good. That's why our, that's why our air is so clean, because carbon dioxide is the clean air of the Clean Air Acts. So we can do it here. We have done it for 30 years. We've done it and made our, we, we have the cleanest environment and the most productive e economy of all of the industrialized world. But what we're doing now, what they're trying to do now is they're trying to cripple us by saying you can't have carbon emissions. Well, you have to have some type of emission in energy production. And carbon is clean. We all breathe it out, you know, carbon dioxide. We all exhale it. It's safe. The plants breathe it in. So, you know, it's, it's foolish to call that pollution. And that's what, the, that's what is happening right now. Environmental organizations that say this is pollution, they, they're doing the bidding of these foreign interest groups that are trying to undermine our economy. Uh, you had mentioned the S word. I call it S word socialism. Uh, why is that a word uh, so difficult for many people to say today? And do you think the administration is a socialist administration? Well, I don't know why it's difficult. I mean, it's, it's, it's something that they're trying to move us towards, mm -hmm. and we really don't need to move towards socialism. We need to stay with free market capitalism. Uh, I think you've seen in the last five to seven years this, this attempt to demonize capitalism as creating ills in the world. 
And that's the complete opposite. Wherever you see capitalism, you see wealth creation. You see profits. You see people driving cars instead of riding bicycles like they used to in China. So socialism cripples economies and capitalism causes them to grow and create wealth and makes them stronger. So if you, you look at any socialist country in the world and you'll see they're, 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 they're struggling. You know, Venezuela, they have a lot of oil resources, but they're struggling with the controls that Hugo Chavez is putting in place. I believe they have uh, lights out at uh, 8 o'clock at night. You can't turn your lights on. And it doesn't that make no sense in a country that is so rich in oil resources? I mean, that, that's exactly the point that I'm trying to make. The government in a socialist system, the government takes control of everything and takes freedom away from the people. And we don't want to take freedom away from our people. That's what made us great is by giving freedom back to the people. Let them decide what is best and not the government. Are you familiar with the 28th Amendment that says that um, Congress shall make no law that applies uh, to citizens that does not apply to Congress. Have you heard of that and what is your position on that? Yeah, you mean the proposal for a 28th Amendment? Yes, it I, is a, it's I've a heard proposal. Of, yes, I've heard of that and that would be a good idea. That would take care of Obamacare. Uh, well, <laughs> yes, I, I think uh, they've, they've kind of, uh, Obamacare needs to just be taken care of anyway because that health care bill was a huge tax increase. Uh, 4,700 pages, 2,700 pages, whatever. You know, they're going to say, well, did you read the bill before you voted on it? No, I'm going to vote no because I'm not going to read 2,700 pages. Who's, who's that a job for? That's a job for attorneys. You know, I, I mean, a 2,700 page bill creates jobs for attorneys because there's going to be regulations and rules in there that are going to go back and forth that are going to cripple our medical industry for years to come. Forcing people to pay for health care benefits, pay taxes if you have health care benefits, pay taxes if you don't have health care benefits. It was just a big tax increase. And the regulations in there put the government in control of our decisions that we make with our doctors. You know, we, we may have needed to correct some issues in our insurance industry, but we did not need to eliminate the free market principles and, and health insurance altogether and put the government in charge of it. Because the government regulation of the insurance industry or taking control of our medical industry is just going to drive up costs, just going to drive up prices, just like they try and take control of the energy industry and it drives up prices there. This is going to drive up medical costs. I, I, I hear they want to uh, cut, make cuts in Medicare to fund it. Well, that's going to hurt the seniors. They're going to now have to pay the doctor because the doctor is not going to be able to provide the service if he's not paid. You know, doctors are small businessmen. They have to have all the equipment, all the medical devices, all the medical uh, x-ray machines. They have to have the medicines available. They have to have a staff. If you look, go into your doctor's office, you have a receptionist, you have someone scheduling, you have someone keeping those files straight, and you want to have all that information straight. So it's a very costly thing to do business in the medical industry, and they're, they're constantly trying to, to, you know, to manage their business. They're small businessmen too. 